boy oh boy <laughs> hey everyone my name is zach peeper you're reached adventures publications welcome to the adventure uh this is i i want to say this is a new low i want i want to act shocked and surprised but i'm not because <clears throat> because i know who these people are and I understand them, and this stuff doesn't surprise me anymore. So when I read a headline like, Mother who lost both her sons to fentanyl poisoning says she's shocked at despicable Biden for laughing at the claim his policies are to blame for their deaths and demands an apology. It's a very, very wordy headline. I'm not, I'm not shocked when I, when I read headlines like that. Because Democrats have been doing things like this for years. Hillary Clinton. At this point, what difference does it make? And all the times Obama dismissed concerns about drone attacking small innocent children and also American civilians. So, it, it doesn't surprise me when Democrats dismiss the pain and suffering that their actions cause because they're evil. So, if you're not 100% up on this story, let me take you on a journey. A mother who lost her sons to fentanyl has reacted scornfully to Joe Biden laughing off the claim that his policies might be to blame for their deaths, saying in a video message last night, how dare you. Now you can come to dailymail.co.uk and read this. <clears throat> I'm just going to give you the long and short of it. Marjorie Taylor Greene, either knowingly or in, in a misspeak, I don't know which because I'm not inside her head, said to this mother, Rebecca Kisling, in a Senate hearing that uh, perhaps if Joe Biden's policies had been different that her sons would be alive. Well, this mother, her sons died in 2020 from fentanyl that likely came across the border under Trump's watch. And so Biden laughed it off. Ha ha ha. That was the last guy. So, yeah, it might not be your fault that these two kids died, Biden, but laughing at the situation is grisly and morbid and callous, to say the least. <laughs> And what I think is so particularly interesting, as you scroll through this story and familiarize yourself with the situation, <clears throat> you come to a place where you can look at this graph. Now, I want you to look very carefully at this line that's shooting straight up. Notice how, right here at 2015, there's a very sharp uptick during the Trump, during the first Trump year, the trend continues. 2017 hits. It 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 goes from that to that, and almost during the entire Trump presidency, it stays at a smaller climb than it was before his presidency, and then 2020 hits and it shoots right back up, almost vertical. Trump's policies were improving the situation. There was a lot left to be done. I think there's some things he could have done that uh, would have been a little bit harder uh, on the criminals in question. Maybe some things he could have done that would have been, you know, a harder crackdown and, and made the problem even better. You know, gone further towards fixing it. But it's undeniable, based on this graph and based on what we all know to be true, if we have a lick of common sense, that during Trump, the drug problem was not nearly as severe, nor was the illegal immigration problem. We all know that to be a case. And when illegal immigration is high, drug trafficking is high. Again, we know this to be the case. It's just the raw data. So when Biden callously says, that was the last guy that killed your kids. He's conveniently ignoring the fact that under his watch, hundreds of thousands of American children and adults have OD'd 
at a rate that is ever climbing under his presidency. Presidency. Democrat policies kill Americans. Plain and simple. And it is only through the cult mentality pushed by cultural Marxism. It is only by the intersectional victim hierarchy that binds all these disparate groups together under the one true heavenly cult of woke that Democrats continue to hold power. In a remotely sane world, people would look at this graph and they would say, well, that's pretty much definitive proof right there. The Democrats kill Americans. I'm voting red for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, if it saves one life, but they don't actually stand by the uh, things they say. They don't actually mean their talking points. They just want to beat you over the head with a moral cudgel when they think they have the ability to. So, Biden is evil. Doesn't care who dies on his watch. As long as him and his buddies are enriched by what he's doing. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, the cartel is giving him a handsome fee behind the curtain. I'd be willing to bet just about anything on it. As long as the DNC is getting that drug money, that sweet, sweet human suffering money. And the votes, of course. Can't forget about the votes. They're going to keep doing this stuff. Vote Trump or DeSantis, whoever gets the nomination this coming presidential election. Have independent organizations monitoring ballot locations. Demand from your state that mail-in voting and voting machines are outlawed. I think we should push for a national voting holiday too and have every state do federal elections on the same day as well as, uh, as, well as a federal law that says the ballots have to be counted within 24 hours because if Venezuela and Brazil and Honduras can do it, so can we. If Florida can do it, so can the rest of the states. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Let's go, Brandon. And welcome to the adventure. <laughs>